U21 is out with performance improvements and more. U itself is a React-inspired Rust web framework that compiles to Wasm and is one of the longer-running frameworks in that space right now. So what's new in 0.21? Passing in dependencies to use effect is a familiar course of action for React ecosystem developers. The big change in U0.21 is that the dependency array is now the first argument rather than the second. And even better, there's an automated refactor that uses a sed-like tool, which makes upgrading fairly easy. As you can see here, the pattern doesn't just apply to use effect, but also to use callback and use memo, etc. In practice, this change enables better ergonomics around the usage of fields and dependencies. If I change this use effect code that I have here to use s.id, which you know could be a, like a i32 or something like that, something that implements copy, then we won't need to clone if we're also going to use it inside of our use effect. Originally, you had to move the value into the callback to use the struct inside, which caused you to need to, outside of this closure, to do something similar to what I had for time formatter here and clone the ID, then pass it in later. With the new syntax, you can rely on Rust's ability to copy values like U32s, leading to a much less noisy interaction. At number two, we've got versatile child types. In practice, what this means is that you can now implement the render props pattern with children. So for example, I've got this render prop example component that uses a closure to return some HTML. If we look at our component props, we can see that our children is now typed as callback and not something like children. So this callback accepts a render props and returns HTML. This is what we mean by arbitrary types. So if we look at props.children, which is a callback, we can call emit on that as many times as we want to because we passed that in originally as a child of this component. As long as we have the structs to pass in as the arguments, we can now pass in a callback as children, call it as many times as we want with as many arguments as we want and render those results. Coming in at number three is U agents, which got a complete rewrite in 0.21. U agent is a crate used to offload work to web workers. And this brings a simplified architecture making worker related code easier to maintain. The key points here are the new providers and the new scope. There are now three types of workers. I've built examples for OneShot and Reactor. So if we look at this app, we can see here that I've got a OneShot provider with a Fibonacci task and a Reactor provider with the time format Reactor. Both of these have a path to some JavaScript file that is going to be created for us by Trunk, but these will likely match up with these files in our source bin. So source bin worker and source bin worker reactor. Worker and worker reactor are only used for registering the code that we're using inside of this worker. They are not super interesting files. That said, we can use macros to define different tasks. So the Fibonacci task that we use in our web worker uses the one shot macro to define the Fibonacci function and return some value. If we look at the one shot example here, we'll see that it starts with some value, there's some form field, and then we can use one shot runner here to get at our task. We define a code block for calculate, and we can take the input value and use dot run. And we can take fib agent here, which is just the fib task we set up using a one shot runner. And we can use dot run with some input value and await that value to get the output value from the Fibonacci web worker. This is a really nice way of interacting with web workers. I actually, I really liked this when I started working with it. So if we go to the demo site here, there's this u0.21 agents site that I put up, link in the description if you wanna go find that. On the left-hand side, we can pick a number, pick something fairly small, hit submit. It goes to the web worker, it comes back, output Fibonacci value. And we can of course do this for any number we want, getting any Fibonacci number back. You can also see the render props output from earlier, where we take that function and call it three times to build a list. It's also important to note that you will need to use links inside of your index.html if you're using something like trunk with a data type of worker and a data bin pointing to the same file name that is in source bin. The reactor then is slightly different, but really not that different. We use the reactor macro instead, we get some scope and we effectively process a stream here. So we're using while let syntax to, as long as we have a next value, get that value, process it. In this case, we're taking a U64 and turning it into a human readable time string. And then we use the scope to send that value back. This functions the same way. So if we look at the reactor example, we've got a reactor provider up here with the time format reactor pointing to our worker reactor.javascript. We've got the reactor example, which uses a use reactor subscription. This subscribes to all of the values coming from the reactor. So it'll be a giant slice of everything the reactor has ever produced. I set up an interval here and we leak it so that it just runs forever. Once every second, we use the time formatter that we just built with use reactor subscription to send values to the reactor web worker. And then when we want to render it, we use that subscription. In this case, I'm iterating over it, grabbing the last one and turning that into a string as well as logging something out. So that for the first 10 seconds now results in the output now, but this number is going up once every 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, we will see in 11 seconds and 12 seconds and so on, because this reactor is constantly receiving values and giving us back 
output. Now, if we ever want to send additional messages to that worker, we can. So if I hit submit on the left, we get in eight minutes in between these, you know, 60 second calls to our web worker. So all of those values that we've produced so far will be in that vec and we can choose to output them however we want. These are some really nice improvements for you. I'm happy to see you continuing to get better over time. I really like the way that they've built out this web worker support. It feels really not necessarily intuitive, but very easy to use once you get started with it and understand what it's actually doing. I find it much easier to use than let's say the post message raw web worker API. So that's U0.21 and the changes in it. I highly suggest you go check it out and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.